So year sevens, we've got a reading assessment that we're going to do and the guidance in the book is that we spend about an hour on it. Usually we do it over two lessons in, in class when we're in school. So if you'd prefer to do this over two sessions, that's absolutely fine. If you'd like to have a go at it, doing it straight through in one session, equally fine, entirely up to you. Okay, let's have a look then. So it's called The Shilling Pie. Hopefully um, we can see it big enough so we can uh, read what it says. Um, I'm going to read the story to you, then go through the questions and move on. So, the shilling pie. Jim Jarvis hopped about on the edge of the road, his feet blue with cold. Passing carriages flung muddy snow up into his face and eyes and the swaying horses slithered and skidded as they were whipped on by their drivers. At last, Jim saw his chance and made a dash for it through the traffic. The little shops in the dark street all glowed yellow with their hanging lamps, and Jim dodged from one light to the next until he came to the shop he was looking for. It was the meat pudding shop. Hungry boys and skinny dogs hovered round the doorway, watching for scraps. Jim pushed past them, his coin as hot as a piece of coal in his fist. He could hear his stomach gurgling as the rich smell of hot gravy met him. So having read that section, we've got two questions to answer. Question one, how do we know the story is set in winter? You'll see you've got three marks available there. So we need to write down three separate things from that first paragraph that show us that it's set in winter. And then question two, what other details are you given about the setting in this paragraph? Write about the time of day, the place, the people, the evidence that it was set long ago. Now you've got eight marks there. So I'd aim for two things for each of those uh, four bullet points. So two things that tell us about the time of day, two things that tell us about the place, so where the setting is for this story, two things about the people that are within this story and two pieces of evidence that it was set long ago. And that's all from that first paragraph. So answer those questions, put this on pause and then we'll move on to the next section. Mrs Hodder was trying to sweep the soggy floor and sprinkle new straw down when Jim ran in. You can run right out again, she shouted at him, if I'm not sick of little boys today. But I've come to buy a pudding, Jim told her. He danced up and down, opening and closing his fist so his coin winked at her like an eye. She prized it out of his hand and bit it. Where did you find this little shrimp? she asked him, and stop your dancing, you're making me rock like a ship at sea. Jim hopped onto a dry patch of straw. Ma's purse, and she said there won't be no more because that's the last shilling we got, and I know that's true because I emptied it for her, so make it a good one, Mrs Hodder, make it big and lots of gravy. He ran home with the pie clutched to his chest, warming him through its cloth wrapping. Some of the boys outside the shop tried to chase him, but he soon lost them in dark alleys, his heart thudding in case they caught him and stole the pie. So the next questions then. Um, question three, we find out about characters from what the narrator tells us and what the characters say and do. What have you found out so far about Jim? And that's worth four marks. So you'll need to go back to that last uh, screen and think, read through what else have we found out about the character of Jim? We need four separate things to get the full four marks. And what have we found out about Mrs Hodder? And again, we need three separate things to get the three marks there. Question four, it says the three similes in the passage have been underlined. Let's just go back and have a look at those. So we've got just here, his coin, sorry, his coin as hot as a piece of coal in his fist. Down here, his coin winked at her like an eye and you're making me rock like a ship at sea. So there are three similes. It says, for each one, copy them out and explain the idea the writer is trying to get across. For example, in his coin as hot as, hot as a piece of coal in his fist, the idea the writer is trying to get across is... There are six marks available there, so two marks available for each of the similes that you explain what you think the writer is trying to get across. And then it says in the next question, you're going to write about Jim's sisters, Emily and Lizzie. 
Copy this chart and make notes as you read. Your completed chart will earn you up to 10 marks. So you'll need to draw out a table that's got these headings at the top. So we've got Emily and Lizzie. For Emily, what she says and does and what this shows about her. And for Lizzie, what she says and does and what it shows about her. You'll need to fill in five things, five things that Emily says and does and what it shows about her and five things that Lizzie says and does and what it shows about her to get the full 10 marks available. So if you draw the table out and then you're going to fill it in based on the next section that we read. So let's read on then. At last he came to his home in a house so full of families that he sometimes wondered how the floors and walls didn't come tumbling down with the weight and the noise of all of them. He ran up the stairs and burst into the room his own family lived in. He was panting with triumph and excitement. I got the pie, I got the pie, he sang out. Shh! His sister Emily was kneeling on the floor and she turned round to him sharply. Ma's asleep, Jim. Lizzie jumped up and ran to him, pulling him over towards the fire so they could spread out the pudding cloth on the hearth. They broke off chunks of pastry and dipped them into the brimming gravy. What about Ma? asked Lizzie. She won't want it, Emily said. She never eats. Lizzie pulled back Jim's, ha pulled Jim's hand back as she was reaching out for another chunk. But the gravy might do her good, she suggested. Just a little taste. Stop shoveling it down so fast, Jim. Let Ma have a bit. She turned round to her mother's pile of bedding and pulled back the ragged cover. Ma, she whispered. Try a bit. It's lovely. She held a piece of gravy-soaked pie crust to her lips, but her mother shook her head and turned over, huddling the rug around her. I'll have it, said Jim, but Lizzie put it on the corner of his mother's bed rags. She might like it, feel like it later, she said. The smell might tempt her. I told you, said Emily, she don't want food no more. That's what she said. Jim paused for a moment in his eating his hand resting over his portion of pie in case his sister snatched it away from him. "'What's the matter with Ma?' he asked. "'Nothing's the matter,' said Emily. She chucked a log on the fire, watching how the flames curled themselves round it. "'She's tired is all,' Lizzie prompted her. "'She just wants to sleep, don't she?' "'But she's been asleep all day,' Jim said, "'and yesterday and the day before.' Just eat your pie, said Emily. You heard what she said. There's no more shillings in that purse, so don't expect no more pies after this one. She'll get better soon, Lizzie said, and then she'll be able to go back to work. There's lots of jobs for cooks. We'll soon be out of this place. That's what she told me, Jim. Will we go back to our cottage? Jim asked. Lizzie shook her head. You know we can't go there, Jim. We had to move when father died. Eat your pie said Emily. She wants us to enjoy it. But the pie had grown cold before the children had finished it. They pulled their rag pile close to the hearth and curled up together. Jim between Emily and Lizzie. In all the rooms of the house they could hear people muttering and yawning and scratching. Outside in the street dogs were howling and carriage wheels trundled on the slushy roads. Jim lay awake. He could hear how his mother's breath rattled in her throat and he knew by the way she tossed and turned that she wasn't asleep. He could tell by the way his sisters lay taut and still each side of him that they were awake too, listening through the night to its noises, longing for day to come. So before you have a go at answering questions five and six, remember, sorry, wrong way, if we need to fill in this chart, you've got 10 marks available here. So go back through that last section that we've just read. You need to write down five things about Emily, five things that she says and does. So we've got an example here. She tells Jim to be quiet and this shows that she's considerate. That would get you one mark having those two bits done. So we need five things about Emily, five things that she says and does and what it shows about her to get five marks. And then the same for Lizzie, five things that she says and does and what it shows about her to get 10 marks. 
You won't get a mark for the one that's already been done about Emily. Use that as an example, but you won't get a mark for it. So if you use that one and put four of your own, you would only get four marks. So we need five things about Emily that she says and does, what it shows about her. The same for Lizzie. Five things that she says and does and what it shows about her. That will get you the full ten marks there. Then we go on to questions five and six. Question five. So it says, use your chart to help you write about the ways in which Emily and Lizzie are similar. So you've got three marks available there and different. And again, you've got three marks there. So three marks available for the ways that the two sisters, Emily and Lizzie, are similar, that they're the same and three marks available for ways in which the two sisters are different. So you'll need three separate things for each of those. Use what you've written on your chart to help you answer that. And then the final question, question six, she'll get better soon, Lizzie said on line 54. Do you think Lizzie is right? Give clear reasons for your answer based on what you know about other stories. You've got two marks available there. What you know about the mother from the story four marks available there and the atmosphere created by the writer in lines 60 to 67 that's the last two paragraphs just here and you've got four marks available there so 10 marks available in that final question make sure you write enough quite often students make the mistake in questions like this of only writing a couple of lines or a few words you're only going to get one or two marks for that you need detail so think about what you know from other stories do other stories like this tend to have happy endings think about books you may have read films you may have seen television programs do they usually have a happy ending? What do you think? Think about what we know about the mother. What have we learned about her? Does it sound like she's going to get better soon? And then think about the atmosphere created by the writer in those last two paragraphs, okay? Love to see what you've done. You can uh, get parents to help you mark this if you want to or send it through to me. That'll be absolutely fine. So give yourselves a good amount of time on this. Two lessons worth is absolutely fine. I'm not going to post another lesson this week. So this will be two lessons worth for you to be getting on with. Okay, well done. Off you go.